Advanced masking opens up new possibilities for your images. That could be anything from dodging and burning to creating more complex masks, color edits, and so on. The first aspect that we're going to look at is using flow. If you're using a brush in Capture One and you right click, this will bring up the settings panel. The last adjustment is known as flow, and this is very useful, for example, when doing operations like selective lightening or darkening, or otherwise known as dodging and burning. First of all, I'm going to create a new layer and it's going to be a new field layer so I can see the result of my adjustment before having to brush it in. Then I can selectively decide which areas of the adjustment I want to keep on the image. So first of all, new field layer. I'll call this Lighten so I can remember what it's doing. And I'll have a variety of tools in Capture One that I could use to lighten the area of the image. And the area I'm interested in is in the center here where it's just that bit too dark. In this case, I'll use a Luma curve just to lift the shadow slightly, but to keep the color nice and stable. And you can see in this case, the adjustment is applying to the whole image, so I can see exactly what it's going to do. Next, I can invert the mask back, take my brush, right click, and then choose a nice low flow. And what this means is that as I move the brush back and forth, it will gradually build up the mask, giving me lots of control in how exactly the final image should look. If I disable the mask, we can see before and after. If it's too much, I could switch to erase mask or press E on my keyboard and then take some of that mask away. Alternatively, I can also vary the opacity so we can see no effect of that layer to the full effect of that layer. The second aspect to look at is refining a mask. This can be particularly useful if you've already uh, worked with the auto mask or perhaps created a mask from the color editor. So in this example, if I take the advanced color editor picker, pick on the blue shirt, expand out my color range and turn on view selected color range, I can see we have a pretty good selection of the shirt. The next thing I want to do is transform this into a new layer. So the color edit will now become a mask. We can see that mask has appeared in the layers tool. If I press M on my keyboard, we can visualize the mask quite nicely. Zooming into 100%, we can see the edge is not as smooth as it could be. And if I start to do some edits like exposure, for example, then we can see that there's a slight halo around the edge, which is a little distracting. So before making any adjustments, the mask can be refined using the refine mask option in the submenu of the layers tool. Before refining the mask, I'll visualize the mask as a grayscale mask. This will be much easier to see exactly what Refine Mask is doing. Up in the submenu, pick Refine Mask, and then decide with the slider how much the mask needs to be refined. You can see with a relatively low value, the mask has been cleaned up nicely, and the edge blends much better into the outer focus areas. Apply and the mask will be completed like so. Keeping in the grayscale view, I can also go ahead and clean up any areas that I need to. Black is where the mask is not present. White is where the mask is. So over here, I can just do a quick cleanup of a couple of missed areas like so. Press M to remove the mask, like so. And now when I make further adjustments, for example, just editing the exposure, upping the contrast, maybe having some clarity, that the edge looks much smoother and much more natural. Mask can also be filled if you've already outlined an object. Simply choose Fill Mask. Also, if you've drawn the mask with the hardness set a little too high, you can also feather the mask after it's drawn. Just adjust the slider till you have the right amount of feathering and click apply. 
If you find yourself using the options in the submenu frequently, all of them can be added as a shortcut in the keyboard shortcut editor. There are also different shortcuts for adding different kinds of layers, moving through layers, and controlling the brush. Settings from a style or preset can also be applied to a layer. Start by choosing a new field layer, then right click on the layer and choose apply settings from and choose one of your own styles or presets or a built in style or preset. For example, if I choose a color grade like so, I can then vary the opacity by using the layer opacity slider. If you need to cut around more complex objects like skylines or buildings, for example, the auto mask can help you to do that. With the brush cursor tool selected, right click and choose auto mask. You'll see a further circle appear in the center of the brush cursor tool. This is your sample zone. So in this case, if I wanted to simply mask the sky, I would keep the sample zone on the sky and then my next circle over the edge of what I would like to auto mask. As soon as I let go of the mouse or pen, then you see the mask finds the edge like so. If I turn the mask off by pressing M and just adjust exposure, for example, you can see the mask has done a nice job of cutting round the skyline like so.